Yes. Well, hello, and welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. Guys, today I wanted to talk to you about chilies. You know, there's a lot of confusion over certain chilies, and I wanted to iron it all out right here in this one show. And also to give you a good, strong understanding and knowledge of different chilies, their heat profile, and uh, what they look like, both fresh and dried, things like that. So you can understand what one is used for and another. This is just a show to help you become a little better acquainted with something that a lot of Americans seem to be intimidated by. So I'll tell you what, come over this way and let's talk about all these wonderful tasty little chilies. What you're about to find out is going to be surprising. Come over this way. Okay guys, I have here a whole variety of chilies. Some really, really wonderful tasting things. Let me move this. Hmm. There we go, that's yummy. And I'm gonna start right up here in this corner. And what we're gonna do is go from the mild chilies to the hot chilies and take you in order through them and show you the different chilies and what they're named. And that way you get some really good idea of what is what because sometimes a chili that's fresh has a different name when it's dried. Not always, but sometimes. Let's start up here. These are just plain old sweet chilies. These come out of Mexico and uh, it's a wonderful item. They're very similar to bell peppers in their uh, flavor profile and in their sweetness. In fact, they're a little bit sweeter than bells. Uh, beautiful color to them. They have zero heat at all. Bell peppers have no heat. There's a lot of other chilies that are just totally, you know, heatless, like the, the bananas. There's uh, also a uh, zero heat, uh, or what they call a sweet wax, that uh, is just really good tasting. So if you're looking for a chili with zero heat, there's a lot of options. Don't be intimidated. Now, when we start talking just a little bit of heat, that would be something like a paprika. And unfortunately, I can't find, it's hard to get in North America, fresh paprikas. It's unfortunate because they're delicious and they're wonderful stuffed and I wish I could find them in my grocery store, but who knows. Anyway, it is commonly used as a spice, beautiful red color spice, and uh, paprika has a very low heat profile. Now, heat is judged by what's referred to as the Scoville scale, okay? And uh, the, the Scoville units, um, when it comes to paprika, are very mild. They, they rate at 50 to 200 Scoville units on that. Now, something that's a little bit warmer, and it's probably the most commonly used chili in Mexico, one of the most popular chilies in Texas, and that's this little darling right here. This is a poblano chili. Now, poblanos, they are 500 to 2,000 Schofield units. And that's not really that hot when you get right down to it. It's nowhere near as hot as uh, a jalapeno. The hottest of these and understand that that rating on there was 500 to 2,000. So sometimes you get a mild one, but sometimes you just get a blasting hot one, and it's more like eating a jalapeno. So, and you can't really tell the difference from the outside that I've ever been able to tell. Sometimes on the hotter ones, I notice they have darker colored seeds, but it's not always. It's kind of a strange thing. Anyway, when you take a poblano and you dry it out, it becomes this, and this is what's called an ancho. Ancho chili. Wonderful. This is a fantastic item for making sauces. You can also rehydrate these and stuff them the same way that you can stuff these. This is probably the best chili in the world for stuffing. This one is a little narrower at the top than most poblanos. They're generally a little fatter and sometimes shorter and just great chilies for stuffing. The next on the list over here is going to be this guy, and this is an Anaheim chili. Now, Anaheim's very, very popular chilies throughout the United States. They're 500 to 2,500 Scoville units, so very similar to the Poblanos. Actually, generally, Poblanos are just slightly milder than the Anaheim's are. Both great for stuffing. These crushed red peppers, honestly, that is going to vary with each brand of crushed red pepper that you buy. Sometimes they use the uh, um, Arbol chilies, sometimes they like to use the Japanese 
uh, chilies. Sometimes they just they go into other kinds of things that you've never even heard of. So when it comes to crushed red pepper, you just kind of have to taste the brand and find out if it's one that you like. Uh, good luck finding a really tasty one. Um, I like to go to Hispanic markets. I think they have very, very good quality crushed red peppers. Now, those crushed red pepper can be mild or extremely hot, so there's no way I can get a Schofield rating on something like that. Cayenne, that's a whole different story. This wonderful orange spice, fabulous tasting. But I tell you what, cayenne is a bit on the hot side. 30,000 to 50,000 Schofield units on that, and that is some really, really hot stuff. Be cautious with it, okay? Now back down here, I told you we were going to go from uh, mild to hot, and I kind of got off guard with uh, or off base with those two. Coming down from the uh, Anaheim to the next hottest, we have here what is called a chilaca. Now a chilaca chili, wonderful tasting. They are just slightly sweet. However, they are just a bit warmer. Okay. Now those chilaca chiki, uh, chilies are going to be 2,500 to 5,000 Schofield units. So that's pretty warm. Uh, this one right here is what the chilaca looks like when it's dried out. This is a pasilla. Now, for some reason, north of New Mexico and Texas, they call this chili, the poblano, pasillas, which is this. And it's a whole different kind of chili. I don't know why they do that. It doesn't make any sense. So when you go to the grocery store, it might be a little bit confusing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this show. Because I was in a Colorado grocery store, and I noticed that this, I was looking for poblanos, and it was being marketed as posilla. And I told the manager, but he didn't seem to really give a rat's rear end. I guess he didn't think I knew what I was talking about. But this is the reality of it is. Ancho, poblano, pasilla, it comes from chilaca. Very easy. This guy right here, now uh, before I get into this one, there is a chili that looks a lot like this and it's called the California chili. If you can't find California chilies which are delicious tasting, just go out and get yourself some Anaheim's and that's what a California chili is. It's an Anaheim that has been dried, okay? And they have this nice red soft outer coating but they're a little bit milder than this right here. Now this wonderful chili here is called a guajillo. When it comes to sauce making in Mexico, this is one of the favorites. It is considered to be decadent in its flavor, and it is. It's delicious. So give these guajillos a try for your sauces. Beautiful red sauces for uh, like chilies rellenos or uh, something like an enchilada. Wonderful sauce with this. These are hard to find fresh, okay, but easy, and especially in Texas, to find these uh, dried. Now we get down here to a little bit hotter chili, and by the way, this one right here, that Guajillo chili, that one rates at 2,500 to 5,000 Schofield units. So it is just like the Chilaca and the Pasilla when it comes to heat, okay? And these, this adds a richness to this when they're used in sauces together. Right here we have a wonderful chili. This is one that is probably the most popular in the United States, and this one is the Jalapeno. The jalapeno is sold everywhere, and everybody knows what it is, everybody knows how hot it is, okay? So, to help that Schofield rating reference system come into play, the Schofield rating for the jalapeno is 2,500 to 8,000 Schofield units. So if you've ever been into one of these that was extremely hot, you probably got one that was closer to that 8,000. If you got one that was really mild, closer to that 2,500 Schofield units. However, if you've ever tasted these and you know how hot they are, then you can apply that heat rating that you understand with this to peppers that have no heat and those that are in between and those that can be hotter. So you will know when these things are vine ripened to the point of being red, they are then taken, clipped off of that vine or off of the plant, and they are taken in to be smoked. They smoke them and it comes out like this, and this little guy is what's called a chipotle. So chipotle is just a ripened, smoked jalapeno. They are delicious tasting. Mmm, oh, the smell, the smoky, wonderful smell that it has. Fabulous in sauces. Makes its own sauce by itself fabulous. It's a hot, spicy sauce because of the chili it's made from. Now, if I was to take this, this right here, and dry it, I will get this right here. Dried chili. 
that's how much this shrinks up and this was about the same size as this when I started drying this uh, it was about a month and a half ago so what we're going to do also in this show is I'm going to show you a time-lapse progression of drying these chilies and that's going to come right after this description this right here is your next hotter chili and boy it is hot this is called a serrano it looks similar to the jalapeno in length but it's much skinnier as you'll notice often a little bit more uh, curved now your serranos those are 8,000 to 22,000 Schofield units they are estimated to be roughly five times hotter than the jalapeno so watch out for this little guy it can really spice your dishes up all right now we get into the next hotter one and this is one that I like to use to heat up my dishes when I want to add some spice and really give them some bang I throw in our bowl this is a dried our bowl this is a fresh our bowl okay our bowl chilies these little suckers <laughs> boy they are hot let me tell you 15,000 to 30,000 Schofield units okay if you want to add bang to your dish and it still be somewhere in the range of reasonable for most people use these and use them sparingly okay that right there that wonderful arbol chili is just blasting hot but there's one that puts them all to shame and there's actually chilies hotter than this one however for common cooking purposes this is it when it comes to hot right here now this right here is called a, a habanero habaneros are used sometimes in sauces and uh, sometimes in the uh, chili that's used for spicing up uh, tamales and things like that however it needs to be used very very sparingly they are exceedingly hot the typical habanero is a hundred and fifty thousand to three hundred and twenty five thousand Schofield units so many 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 times hotter than something like this this isn't something you want to go and bite into okay it will burn your mouth badly you don't want to cut these or handle them without wearing some gloves now I'm holding the outside but there's generally not much of any capsaicin outside of a chili it's on the inside now if I was to cut into this though I would immediately glove up if I'm going to cut into any of these that are hot chilies like this I want to glove up first because that capsaicin it'll burn your skin and it sticks to your skin and doesn't wash off with with good detergent and water it just doesn't wash off very easily and then later in the day maybe you scratch your face or rub under your eye or something and suddenly your face is burning all because of what you handled earlier in the day so please always handle these with gloves on so there you go there is sort of a basic reference of these common chilies your cayenne on that one remember that cayenne comes in there between these two okay in the heat structure so if you're looking to really bang uh, get things really banging hot that cayenne will do it for you and that's a good way to do it just on off-the-shelf spice also it needs to be mentioned these that are dried can then be turned into a paste and that paste can then be dried again and ground into the any of these powders okay so you can make a powdered chili any way you want and that will be a different show of course and I will be making some uh, of those ground chili powders for you later on now let's get into a time-lapse progression of these green ones so you can see how it goes from being this to being this or from being this to that <laughs> it's funny the change that they go through however it's also interesting to watch so let's get on with this time lapse and take a look at how these wonderful chilies get dried now I want to do one mention right before we hit time lapse that dried chilies and dehydrated chilies are two different things okay a dehydrated chili would be me taking a chili and making a bunch of slices lengthwise or crosswise putting them in a food dehydrator and dehydrating them then this chili would look just like it does now except dried it would not turn red and turn like this so dehydrated would affect it completely in a different way don't confuse dehydrators with drying drying chilies is a long process where they have to sit out they have to make sure they're not in, this, in contact with the surface at the same time uh, all the time they have to be rotated or strung up on strings now, I'm just going to do it laying down and we'll watch how these turn out okay I am getting these pulled aside because of course as I mentioned we're doing this time-lapse progression so let's get right on to that 
time lapse to the chin. Beginning of the drying, Sunday, February 28th. Okay, this is now March the 6th of 2016 and our chilies as you'll notice are starting to wrinkle a little bit and this one's starting to change color our little arbol has started to change color a whole lot he's turning yellow and red losing a lot of his green and most of this happened in the last two days the uh, habanero hasn't really changed a lot in color these are getting a little deeper in their tones and we're going to see a whole lot of change in days to come though occasionally if you've got this on a flat surface then lay your uh, turn your chilies over and that way they won't get wet spots on them. Like so. There we go. There you have it. That's a single week. Now, we're just going to keep waiting. Alright, this is now March 8th. And I wanted to show you this. Look over here at the Serrano. These things have already turned almost all completely orange. Very bright. And back here, look at this. That little arbol. It's changed color. It's almost as bright as the habanero was. And then down here, I'm starting to get some color change on this one. Alright, so two more days have gone by and that's what we this got. This is March the 13th of 2016. Here's the change. This is March 16th of 2016. Little change here and here. March the 17th, 2016. More red here. A lot of change here. Now here we are March 27th. Okay you see a lot of change on these now. Uh, some of them have dried completely now. This arbol is completely dried. He's still just a little bit leathery and over here this little guy this is dried up also so I want to take this one we're going to put him aside. Now our jalapeno and that's our serrano okay. Our jalapeno if you remember I showed you one earlier that had already been dried a long time ago and that was that well look how much that has changed it's getting there it's still very soft pretty plump inside so there's a lot of drying left to do on that this one right here has become dry it's leathery now so this one's ready for me to go ahead and set aside I'm going to put this in a plastic bag with these others so as these finish drying out and the sweet pepper is almost there okay I just have to wait till they come to a where they're sort of leathery the chilaca, if you notice, it's not changing color, but it is getting dried, especially down here on this end. And these turn a real dark brown. And of course, a lot of times these uh, poblanos, they're going to turn a bright red before they go ahead and dry out. Now this one's got a few spots on it. Not a big deal because we're only doing this for demonstration. We're not worried about the quality of the chili that we're doing, okay? So, up here, this little habanero is starting to get dry but not quite there yet. It's still just a bit too soft and punky. If it feels like there's sort of a, a, a bit of air or uh, moisture in the inside of it, then you want to avoid it. You want them, like I said, to feel quite leathery, uh, beginning to get stiff, but still, they shouldn't crackle. Okay, let's see down here. That crackly noise, that's too dry on the tip, but it's perfect here if you're drying. All right, so here we go. Let's keep waiting. This is April the 24th. Everything is almost finished drying except for the ancho still has a little bit of red in it. When it turns dark like this, it's finished. Uh, this was the chilaca, is now a pasilla. This was the poblano, it's now an ancho. You can see this drying prog uh, progression. When they dry, they change flavors. They really become something cool. It has been a long time on these chilies. But we've learned a few things on these that sometimes those stores that you buy your food at have things mislabeled. The grocery stores I went to in Colorado that had poblanos labeled as pasillas, it's not even the same kind of chili. Okay, so be careful what you're looking at. Learn those chilies, but also don't be afraid to use them. These things have such a bold flavor and so many varieties of flavor, so many different levels of heat. Even if you don't like hot chilies, there's so much to experiment with that isn't really that hot. So don't be afraid of chilies. Give them a try. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking today. And to my subscribers, I would like to say thank you very much. And you folks, you have a good day. Bye. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking today. The show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today, where you will always find something hot 
and ready to eat.